we talked slightly about this in the last uh, section where we were talking about how uh, strings are objects, but to be a little bit more specific, strings are lists. Lists are objects as well. But the entire point of that is that means that every single character inside of a string has an associated index to it. And so just like any other list, if I were to use those square brackets for my string, it's going to give me back the value at that particular index. So in this case, uh, index four is this little O. Uh, and we can start to do a number of different things, but I do want to clarify that there is some uh, rules to working with these strings. The first one is that big fancy $5 word, strings are immutable, which means that you can't just change them. You can't update them like we were doing uh, with uh, lists. So if I tried to come in and do that same jello world uh, from a previous video, it does not work. Uh, but I can do something like this. And we'll get into what this fancy magic is in a second. In fact, why not? That is known as slicing. Okay big fancy definitional term and then we'll actually play with this uh, for a second. Slicing basically says that if I give it this parameter or if I use a list, so just to kind of work off of this, if I give a list some n colon m, what I'm saying is I want to create a sub list from my list and I need to specify a starting point and a stopping point. So uh, in start point m stop point. So with hello world, for example, if we take a look at this example, uh, string two to 10. If we jump back over here, that says to start at two and go all the way to 10, not including 10. So I'm gonna stop it right here. This technically should start here. And what we should get is exactly that. The element starting at the two index, going all the way through until we get to the element at the nine index and we get a sub list. So you can see we can start to do a number of different aspects. And what does this one do? Explore what that one does if you don't give it a starting point or an ending point. See what happens. But let's just explore sort of this for a second. I've obviously been traversing through the days of the week, but this is a list, which means I can do list slicing with this list. So same kind of thing can go on here. If I said days, uh, two, two, there aren't 10, so I'll, I'll shorthand it to um, five. Days two to five. Again, this is saying I want to create a sub list of the elements starting at the two index. And conveniently, I have that here. Starting at the two index, giving until five, so getting to five. So I should have Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, nice. I can also add in some steps to this. So I could say something like days uh, one colon six colon two. Now what this is saying is starting at one, going until six, going two times. And so, or not going two times, but uh, starting at one, going to six, so going to the last one, but going two steps each time. So skip over Tuesday, give me Wednesday, give me Wednesday. Skip over Thursday, give me Friday. So it'll do just that. You won't see that too often. It, it does exist like beyond going every other, like you will never see someone do a one, six, four or something like that. Even when you're um, going with higher level ones, 
it does work. You can do it. I don't. Uh, I don't typically use it. Um, one of the ones that I will do a lot that it is almost uh, so well known that I, you know, I would never uh, ask it as a question on an assignment, but uh, it's almost always needed. Black magic. Welcome to black magic or list comprehension uh, with uh, Python. So what is going on here, right? Okay, so the first thing that we're dealing with is the fact that Python allows us to do negative indexing. And the way to think about this is that uh, if we were to count this as negative one, that would be negative two, negative three, negative four, five, negative six, negative seven. And so Python allows us, it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm just saying like Python allows us to do that thing, okay? But what that allows for is then using sort of these list comprehensions. Remember, I said that the first colon represents the starting point. The second colon rep represents the ending point. And then the last point or in this version is saying how to step through the list. So skip every other uh, element. Well, in this case, remember, that is just going to tell me, give me the entire list from start to stop. Since they're blank, it's just gonna go from the starting point to the ending point. If I came in and then said something like negative one, well, oh, in this case, it's saying, uh, give me everything from the starting point to the negative one index. And again, we're dealing with the fact that Python allows negative one indexing. Saturday is the negative one index. So give me everything up to the negative one. Again, we're just dealing with slicing. Again, you're, this is the extent you'll see uh, of ever someone um, going elaborate with like a two colon list comprehension traversal thing, uh, just cause it's so well known. Um, but you may start to see, and if you're thinking about your project, this may be beneficial for, I don't know, getting a subset of a list. 